first of all, Happy New Year, everyone. Even if I am like three weeks late at this point, I hope 2021 is even like 5% better than last year for you. And I hope you've all got some good New Year's resolutions. Personally, one of my resolutions is that I promise to post more videos more consistently than I did last year because you guys deserve it and because I should stop being a lazy piece of crap. But speaking about hopes and goals, over the holiday period, I was talking with some friends and some teammates and we compiled the list of a few gameplay changes and features that we'd love to see Ubisoft test on the test server that we all think would make the game better or at least more enjoyable and fair. So without further ado, hello internet, my name is Nebulous, let's dive into it. Before we get any further, thanks for clicking on a new video from me. If you're going to enjoy this video, please leave a rating down below. And if you like the content I produce on this channel, please consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new uploads, as infrequent as they might be. So the first change I'd love to see Ubisoft try out, mm, well, actually not even try out, bullet holes need to go. There's no trying to get rid of them, just get them out of the game. I think pretty much every member of the community agrees that bullet holes are maybe one of the worst aspects of gameplay in Siege. They're unfun to play with because you know you're using a stupid cheesy tactic that doesn't inspire creative and interesting gameplay, and they're certainly not fun to play against and die to because there's very little counterplay to it. Yes, you can drone more effectively and thoroughly, and yes, if you can spot the player peeking bullet holes you can generally get a free pick onto them, but attackers shouldn't have to drone for pinholes in a wall on the other side of the room when there's already so many ways for defenders to peek and hold angles onto the attackers. Whether that's punch holes, playing off of information like cameras and things, sitting behind a deployable shield so you can peek through there, which is also a miserable experience and something we'll get into. My point being though is that surely we can all just unanimously agree that bullet holes need to get out of the game. There's no testing, there's no trying, just get him gone. Coming in second is a change I've thought about for quite a while, and I've never really been sure whether I like it or not, so I figure I'll pass it on to you guys and you can let me know what you think of it. This change is basically focused around being able to lie prone, whether that means removing the player's ability to lay prone altogether so they can only crouch or stand up, or just making them unable to aim down sights while prone. I'm not really sure what I prefer. I think removing prone altogether is maybe too drastic, but equally, laying prone unable to ADS seems relatively pointless. So why do I want this change, or more aptly, why do I want to test it? Primarily because of all the cheesy moves that you can do, like silent dropping through hatches or being able to lay prone and shoot through drone holes. Removing prone from the game also solves issues like these cheesy angles and bullet or punch holes and minimizing the risk reward factor for making plays as such, as well as the fact that I don't really believe lying prone has any inherent skill factor or that it adds value to Siege's gameplay in a positive way, so removing it could only really be a good thing. As with everything in this video, though I'm super curious to get your guys opinions on these changes. Do you agree with me that lying prone isn't super helpful and could be changed? Or do you think it's fine as it is? Or should it just be taken out of the game altogether? Why? Why not? Let me know down below. Now this next change that I'm going to propose is something that's divided the Siege community for as long as I can really remember. I want Ubisoft to experiment with changing the one shot headshot mechanic. But before you run off to the comments to flame me, hear me out. I'm on board for one shot headshot staying as it is. If you can put a bullet straight into someone's head, they should die. That makes sense to me. The change I'd like to see tested however is for when you fire a bullet through a soft wall or floor. In the same way we have caliber based destruction based on what caliber of bullet you're firing into a surface, I think the same soft surfaces should also apply a debuff onto the bullets you're firing through the surface. So for example, if you're randomly shooting your 9mm pistol into a wall and warbang someone's head, it might not kill them with one shot, whereas if you warbang them with a DMR or a rifle, it would kill them with one shot to the head. Just to reiterate though, this change would affect the caliber of the bullets and not necessarily the type of gun. Likewise, the bullet debuff when firing through soft surfaces wouldn't just affect headshots, but the bullet in general. So if you body shot someone through a soft wall, it would do less damage than just shooting them directly. So why do I think this could be a good idea to experiment with? Well, to be honest, I don't know what the outcome of this change would be. I think that while it is certainly a skill to be able to predict where an enemy will be through a soft wall and be actually able to accurately fire head level to kill them, that is outweighed by the number of kills and things that come from randomly spraying through a soft surface or mag dumping a soft wall. Especially since at the moment pretty much every gun in the game has about 19 million bullets, so there's no downside to just spraying and pre-firing every soft wall you can. Now for the final and potentially controversial idea, but it's something that's been tossed around the community for quite some time. That being for each operator's secondary gadget to be removed and instead each team, each round, can choose their secondary 
Fairy Gadgets from a pool of gadgets. What I mean is that instead of Ash having either Breach Charges or Claymore, and the Sledge having Frag Grenades or whatever his other one is, no one knows, you could play Ash and take Frag Grenades and Sledge with Breach Charges. Now, you might think this idea sounds kind of weird, so let me try and explain the main idea behind this change. In one word, flexibility. By allowing each team to pick whatever operators they want based on their primary ability and their primary gadget, instead of having to worry about what the team brings for their secondaries, your team can focus on bringing the operators that you want. For example, what's the main reason no one plays Buck anymore? Well, because you need the explosive utility of the frag grenades for most attacks, so you bring the sledge instead. Why doesn't Mozzie get played as much as he used to? Well, he lost his secondary shotgun that allowed him to make rotations and destruction of the map. Well, what if Mozzie could bring impact grenades then? What if you could play Jackal with flashbang so he can solo roam clear more effectively and have Thermite bring the smoke grenades for an execute? I think you get the idea. So, you might think, hell yeah, we could run 10 frag grenades on attack and 5 nitro cells on defense. But no. So the one rule that would have to be in place for the pooled gadgets would be limits set on the number of gadgets a team can bring. So no more than 3 nitro cells, or no more than 2 shields, 2 sets of frag grenades, or 3 sets of flashbangs. This would obviously be so that teams couldn't abuse the game and make the experience miserable for everyone involved. I do think that while this idea could be a potentially positive change for competitive siege, it may be slightly problematic for ranked, as how would you choose between who takes what gadgets? So a potential solve for this issue would be for the pooled gadgets to be a setting in the custom games so that pooled gadgets wouldn't cause an issue for ranked queues, but could be a better change for the competitive side of the game. Now with this change particularly, I'm super interested to hear your thoughts. Do you like the sound of this idea? Do you think pooled gadgets would be a good change? Why? Why not? Let me know down below, I'm super interested to see what you guys have to say. Anyway, that about wraps up today's video, I hope you enjoyed and learned a thing or two. If you did, please leave a rating down below, and if you enjoy the content I create on this channel, maybe consider subscribing to the channel and turning on the notifications when I upload a new video. I also want to say that a few of you have left some comments on my recent videos asking where my uploads are and what's going on with the channel, and I just want to say that I freaking love and appreciate all you guys, and that life is a bit wonky at the moment with the whole national lockdown in the UK, so things are a bit wonky, but we're sorting ourselves out and we're getting back on track. So just please bear with me for a bit, thank you. Anyway, if you're interested in joining our community, you can find a link to our Discord server and all of my socials down below to keep up to date with me when I'm not uploading. And as always, happy gaming.